number of people over the years ask me how I go about getting the sound that I do uh, when I record jam songs on my channel. Um, so, you know, I've explained that to a number of people in writing, but enough people ask that I thought, you know, I probably just do a video on how I do this um, so that you can all kind of see and try to apply it to your own situation if it would be helpful, right? So uh, obviously, kind of the first thing I begin with is this Rickenbacker 330 or, you know, some of the others that I've got. Because uh, this is the kind of guitar that Weller used for probably 95% of the jam's music, right? This particular model is a 1980 Burgundy Glow. Weller had a, I think it was a 76 Burgundy Glow 330. So this one's a few years younger than that guitar, but pretty much, you know, what he played is what I've got sitting here on my lap this morning. Um, and of course, you don't have to play a Rickenbacker to do this. Uh, you know, a lot of guitars will be just fine. Like a Telecaster is great. A Strat can sound fine. You know, an Epi Casino can be fine. Pretty much anything can be fine, right? But ideally, you got one of these. Now, with respect to what I'm doing with this guitar, notice I have the toggle switch in the middle position. What that does is it brings both of these pickups into play. So the bridge pickup is the more trebly sounding pickup, and the neck pickup is warmer, softer, right? I go to the middle so it allows me to activate both, to bring both into the sound. And then I put everybody, the four tone and volume knobs on full blast. Okay? Then I use this blend knob here, which Rickenbackers have, right? Um, trebly edge, I should say. So that's what I'm doing with the guitar. So what I'm going to show you with the rest of this brief video is what I'm doing with my gear. And, uh, you know, it's not real exotic, right? Pretty unimpressive, really. Um, but let me just start by grabbing the phone here, because that's what I use. And, you know, it may tell me that I'm going to run out of memory space here. But that's okay, we're just gonna keep going. So this is the pedal that I use, right? Humdrum Boss ME50 multi-effects pedal from about 15 years ago, right? This is not new gear, excuse my foot there. Um, but this is what I use, because I really like Boss's effects. And this pedal gives me all the effects that I want and need to approximate a jam sound. So let's start up here with the tone modification, and you'll notice that I'm on the H to S setting. I find that one gives me the kind of uh, vibe I'm going for, pretty close, all on its own, but I really like the H to S here. I'm not sure what that would approximate if you didn't have boss tone modification, but that's what I'm going with here. Then I've got the compressor running. And you'll notice I've got my sustain on full blast and my level on maybe 25 to 30 percent because I want all the sustain, but I'm going to be getting my level from elsewhere. So I'm just going to take a little of it there from the compressor. Then the NS setting is really about the stifling the noise. And I don't want a bunch of hiss going, right? You can already hear some. So if I back that off, yeah, yuck, you don't want that, man. 
Um, so I dial that all the way up to try to suppress all the hiss. Then reverb. I like playing with some reverb. I'm not maxing it out, notice, and I'm on the hall setting as opposed to the room or the spring setting. The hall setting at maybe 55 to 60 percent. Gives me a, a very nice live sound. And then the master level, look at that. I'm on maybe 15 percent because I'm getting the bulk of my volume from elsewhere. And, you know, if I turn this guy up you know, even 30, 40, 50 percent here, not to mention all the way up, I'd be blowing the roof off this house and the police would be here shortly, right? So my master level is pretty low there because, again, I'm getting most of my volume from elsewhere. Um, now let's go down to the overdrive distortion portion of my pedal. You can see that is activated. And I use most of the time the overdrive distortion setting in the lead position. Sometimes I use the loud or the crunch or the natural, but I really like the lead because it allows me to access these four knobs down here to dial in the kind of mix that I'm after. My drive is over 50%. My bottom tone is maxed out because I want some good bass coming through in my guitar. And I've already got a lot of treble from the Rickenbacker, so my tone is at maybe 90% there on the high end tone. That's what this is. It's treble tone. This is bottom bass, right? And then the level, you notice here, I'm at maybe 30%, 25 to 30%. But I'm getting a lot of dirt coming from this overdrive distortion portion of the pedal. Now you'll notice... I, had, I, I avoid the stuff on the right. You know, that's 80s hairband stuff that I'm really not interested in, okay? Uh, so, so that's the overdrive portion. And then finally, I come over here to the, to the modulation, and I use primarily the chorus settings, either chorus, stereo chorus 2 or stereo chorus 1. Those are the two I alternate between. Now, why stereo chorus? Well, because we go up here to the guitar amp outputs. Notice I have a left and a right, and I am using them both. So that is really key to getting really satisfying, good jam sound is playing through two amplifiers at once. And fortunately, this, this pedal has two outputs, so I just go to one amp on the left and one amp on the right. And what the chorus pedal does is it allows me to really enrich the sound in the room by mixing the sound coming from my two amps. Now, you might say, well, the jam never used chorus except on maybe a couple of their more unusual songs like, you know, Tales from the Riverbank, which is actually perhaps my favorite jam song of all time, um, and maybe a few others. But I use the chorus here just enough to enrich my sound in the room. And the Stereo Chorus 1 versus Stereo Chorus 2 allows me to tell the pedal which of my amps I want to be predominant, okay? So those are the tones that uh, I'm, I'm using here off of this pedal. Now let's go have a look real quick at the amps that I'm going to in the room. So there's one over there that I use probably 90% of the time, although I do use this Roland Jazz Chorus from the early 80s, this Jazz Chorus 50. This is a great clean amp, right? But I've got this 1974 Fender Bassman amp that came out of a church basement. It had been there for like 50 years, untouched, really, literally. Um, now, why a basement? Well, because back in the 60s and 70s, 
a lot of guitar players loved this amp so much that they used it for their guitar. So you notice it's got a, a, a two bass instrument inputs and two normal inputs. And I just go to the first normal input and you'll see that my uh, switch is set to the bright setting and then my volume is at six, my treble is, you know, just over eight, and my bass is at five. And, you know, this has got four 12-inch speakers that come with this original bassman cabinet. So this is really a wonderful amplifier. And then if we go to the other side of the room where my uh, ME50 is going to, we've got the good old Holy Grail uh, Vox AC30 here and um, I'm going to come around the back so you can see my knob settings not that this is crucially important because again I think the boss is the boss ME50 is doing the bulk of my work there with the tone but I'm going in the top end of the amp there right uh, and I've got this switch here in the up position uh, my normal volume is at about 40 percent this switch is down and then I've got uh, whoops <clears throat> my top boost mixture is uh, my volume is a little over 50 my treble is at maybe 65 percent and my bass is at 50 percent you know I've got the reverb and the tremolo just turned off because I'm not using that at all. But here, the tone and volume for the master, I've got both of those at about 50%. So that's the AC30's settings there. And going back now to uh, this part of the room uh, and parking the camera again, docking it so you can we can finish up here. So yeah, that's that's what I've got going, and that's what gives me uh, my jam tone, right? Um, and just for purposes of illustration, I want to show you just, hopefully the, the phone can pick this up, but just how using a little bit of chorus with two amplifiers allows you to really enrich your sound. So I'm going to turn off the distortion or the overdrive, excuse me, and I'm going to turn off the chorus for a moment and then just play, you know, an E chord. This is just using tone modification, compression, uh, and reverb. It's fine, right? Now let me turn on the chorus pedal only. Ready? Off. spreads out the sound and having again two amplifiers is really important and then when you add the overdrive you know again you've really got something nice right so there you go that's how Mod Father 1965 approximates the jam tone. Keep playing the jam.